So one last quick example before I, I show you, solve one of the mysteries that I introduced uh, a week or two ago. What about if we do something like, oh, I don't know, 8C8. So I know what row I'm on. I know what answer I should expect as well, right? Because it's, it's an NCM, right? But let's just see how it works out. What's on the new row? 8 factorial. Then the next thing comes is R factorial, which is also 8. Now hold on, remember we said, see these guys, they add up to N. Yeah. And then these guys, they add up to N. Well, therefore, what's gonna have to round this out? Zero. Well, it's zero factorial, isn't it? Hold on a second, hold on. You know who, what this term is supposed to be. You have it on your triangle. What is the term? Uh, it's one. This cancels with this, naturally. So therefore, you see, it's not just a cute trick that zero factorial is one by division. Remember, we reverse engineered it. It has to be one, otherwise the whole Pascal's triangle just explodes, okay? So, there's another reason why, and as you confirmed, it's the n, in this case where n is eight, it's on the end, so that's why it's one, okay? Okay, now, this is going to be my mechanism for explaining one of the mysteries that I introduced before. So I'm, I'm going to leave this here. If you haven't got it written down, don't panic. I won't rub it off. But I just need to cover it for a second. I want you to look at this guy. OK. Now, let me just shut this off for a second. Now, you've already got your Pascal's triangle in front of you. But you probably haven't got this part of it highlighted. But I wonder how many of you actually remember me pointing out this particular pattern in Pascal's triangle. It's very weird. Uh, I picked out some of the rows. Can anyone work out why I picked these rows? What's special about these rows? Yeah, sure. they're the same both ways. Okay, they're the same both ways, but hold on a second. I think in Pascal's triangle, all rows are the same both ways, right? They've, they've all got that symmetry about them, okay? There's something even more special. Let me give you a hint. Have a look at the first number I've circled on each row. What, what are those numbers? Uh, two, three, five, seven, you skip a few, I'm only highlighting the prime numbers. Okay? Do you remember when I highlighted this pattern to you? Notice you got your calculator there, right? If you have a look at any of the rows that I've highlighted, second row, third row, fifth row, seventh row, in these rows and only in these rows, all the subsequent numbers you get, all the 13C1, um, 13C2, 13C3, etc., go ahead and try them on your calculator. They're all divisible by 13. These guys are all divisible by 11. These guys are all divisible by 7. Okay? Now, I pointed that out to you, and maybe it sort of skirted past you because you thought, that's weird, don't get it, got questions to do, you <coughs> on. Okay? But I'm going to explain to you why this is. Okay? We've done some examples already. Right? Let me just, uh, I'm going to put this up again. I'll, I'll come back to it. Uh, ooh, what have I done? Hold on a second. We've done some examples already, right? I want you to have a look at them closely. And let's put a few beside it so you can see what's going on, OK? Uh, we did say 75, this, that's an example. OK, let's add another one down the bottom here. Let's do, let's look at the sixth row. Can you look at the sixth row with me? You've got it there on your, um, on your triangle. <clears throat> do you notice none of the terms are long? I think it's 6, 15, 20. 15, 6, etc. Is that the one I'm looking at? Yeah. None of them are divisible by 6. Do you see that? Like, they're almost, but not quite. Let's see why. <clears throat> if I do say 6C3, let's go back to this um, factorial notation way of writing this binomial coefficient and try and sort of get at the gears of what's happening. By definition, I'm saying you've got your n factorial at the top. Help me out. What's going to happen on the bottom? 3 factorial, 3 factorial. Okay, now I've run out of space here, but I'm going to keep going, so you can keep going down the page. From here, I can again do that unrolling thing, right? I can say, well, that's going to be on the top 6 times 5 times 4 times. And I stop there because this is a point that's useful to me, so I can stop there. On the denominator, I've got the 3 factorial already. I know that's going to cancel. This other 3 factorial though, I think I need to unroll that as well so I can start to cancel it too. So I'll write 3 and 2 and 1. Okay? So far so good. I haven't done anything 
you know, rocket science. I've just expanded the thing according to what we know of our defini definitions. Addition cancelling. We already know about this, <coughs> so that's the easy part. What else can we cancel? Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. You can see there and there. Those guys are going to go, aren't they? Okay. So therefore, a lot of this collapses. What do you get left with on the numerator? You get left with 20 there. What's left on the denominator? One. So those, all those things sort of have vanished away. And that, of course, is the middle term, isn't it? Now, just think about what's happened here. Why isn't this a multiple of 6? Because I started off, the very first thing that I wrote was 6 times some other stuff. But then what I ended up with was not a multiple of 6. Why? At which point did it stop becoming a multiple of 6? I cancelled a few different things, right? When I cancelled these two, was it still a multiple of 6? It was, right? Because look, there's a 6 right there. Okay? But then the next thing that Rick suggested was I cancel that 6 with these guys, which is absolutely right. So that 6 goes, you just get them with a 5 and a 4, and of course neither of them are going to make you a multiple of 6. Does that make sense? Okay. Now I can do this for any other term in that row. In fact, I'll do it one more time just so you see and I'm convinced of what's happening. If I do the next one along, 6C4. Come on, you can tell me what's right now. What's on the top? 6 factorial. So again, you're starting with, that thing says 6 times 5 times all this other stuff. You're expecting something should be a multiple of 6. But what's on the denominator? Anyone? 4 factorial. 2 factorial because, of course, those two add up to n, which is 6 this time. Okay? Alright, uh, what now? I'm going yeah, to unroll that thing, or roll, whichever, okay? Uh, this guy up here, I can pull the 4 factorial out. So 6 times 5 times 4 factorial. Okay. And that 4 factorial is there, ready to be cancelled. Okay, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Very, very similar pattern, right? Uh, you still get this guy that goes, just like before. And then you look and you see, are there any other options? And the answer is yes. This guy is going to turn this into a 3. Do you agree? So it's like, oh, not a multiple of 6 anymore, which is why, what do we got? 3 times 5, which is, as you can check on your train. Okay. Ah, uh, now, just look at what we've concluded. On these rows where our, our cool weird pattern doesn't work, the reason it doesn't work is because something will always catch you, right? It's like, I'm multiple 6, I'm multiple 6, yeah, not anymore. Someone always will get you down the bottom. Does that make sense? Now just have a look at a term on the next row. Any row, sorry, any term, like say this guy. We already worked out this one, right? It's in the seventh row. Why is the seventh row important to me? Because seven is prime, okay? Now have a look at what happened. Look, do you remember? The first thing I wrote down was, you know, six factorial, six fa whatever, seven factorial. And I'm like, cool, I've started off, I'm a multiple of seven, of six, of eight. But eventually some things cancel out, right? But this seven doesn't cancel. In fact, it can't cancel. Have a look. Let me just do the next term for you. You won't even have to calculate this one. Let's do 7C4. That's 7 factorial, 4, and 3. You with me so far? Uh, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1, because my 4 factorials have cancelled. Do you see nothing's going to touch that 7? Do you see? And do you see why nothing can touch the 7? Because it's prime. Prime literally means nothing divides by here. That's what prime means, right? The only thing that could divide by 7 is like 7 or like a, another multiple of 7, okay? But have a look. What's the biggest number that's in your fraction? It's always this guy, isn't it? Right? The denominator never has a bigger number. The numerator always has the biggest one, okay? So there's no, not going to be any 7s down here, so there will be nothing to divide through by that 7. And it's the same, whichever, whichever of the prime rows that you're on, right? These guys are going to be like, what's that? Uh, 11 factorial on what for this one? This will be 1 factorial, 10 factorial, right? And then this one will be 11 factorial on 
2 factorial, 9 factorial. And you'll never get an 11 on the denominator to cancel out all the 11s you have on the numerator. And the same for the 13s, and the same for the 17s, and on and on and on. Okay? Does it make sense? Do you see why we needed this machinery in period seven, uh, zero, rather, to understand what was actually going on? Okay? So, it's a bit of a mystery solved. I haven't yet, and we won't for another little while, explain why, I'm so bad at this, explain why the actual formula is this. I promise we'll get to it, okay? But at least for now, as we just demonstrated very ably, we can use it. 